Welcome back to Champion News Talk Radio, brought to you by championnews.net. This is Carol Parisi, and today we have C. Stephen Tucker with us, truthaboutobamacare.com. Correct. And uh, Steve has been championing health care forums for the past three to four years. Steve's a grassroots Tea Party leader. Mm -hmm. And um, we were talking about some of these exchanges here in, in Illinois. Right. We, you were saying some compelling things over the break that our listeners need to hear. What type of implications is this going to have for Illinois, Steve? Well, thanks to the CBO who conveniently decided to accurately score the legislation three years later, we now know that instead of it costing $960 billion and being deficit neutral as President Obama promised us it would be, it now will cost us $2.5 trillion over the first 10 year period. So from $960 billion yeah. to And you're two not talking some harebrained outfit other than the fact that this is a government, this is supposed to be the sane part of the government that's toting up the cost of this crap. Correct. The CBO. And it's finally coming out. Congressional Budget Office. Yeah. So now they decided to finally score the full 10 years. And they also stated that we're going to be adding 25 million Americans onto Medicaid. There is a dramatic and dangerous problem with that. Uh, and I'm going to tell you what it is. There were two studies completed. Uh, one was done in 2005 by the American Academy of Cardiology. And they were assessed to find out what is the survival rate of people who have surgery on Medicaid compared to those who have surgery with private health insurance. At the end of that study, they found out that patients who have surgery on Medicaid are 50% more likely to die after that surgery than those with private health insurance. <laughs> so as soon as the American it's Academy of Cardiology... It's not that 50% die, it's that... 50% more likely, more likely to die the, yes. because of low follow-up care or no follow-up care because of the ridiculously low reimbursement ratios that the few doctors left who take Medicaid actually take it. Those are the parameters. So as soon as the study came out, there had to be something done about it. So more big government applied. Fast forward to four years, University of Virginia does another study, follow-up study. Guess what the percentage is now if you have surgery on Medicaid compared to private health insurance? You are now 97% more likely to die. It doubled? Yes. Now, this is before Understand, this study was completed in 2009. This is before we had 25 million people onto our already bankrupt Medicaid rolls. And they criticized Sarah Palin for using the term death, death panels. panels. <laughs> if you reduce that reimbursement ratio to less, and that's what, what Richard Foster's study said, Obamacare will cut $4.95 trillion from Medicare, not 960, or what did, what did they say, $560 billion for the first year. Yeah. That happened. Let's go forward 20 years. As Richard Foster, the chief Medicare actuary, found in his study, try 4.95 trillion. Try reducing the reimbursement ratio the government pays to doctors who take Medicare to less than what they pay for Medicare, Medicaid, and then you add that in to the two studies that were done in 05 and 09, and you have a recipe for disaster for our senior citizens. Well, and then we will be the senior citizens That's at that correct. point. I'm rapidly on now, my way. Now, with those numbers that you just threw out. <clears throat> Obamacare was really designed and is designed to eventually cause all private health insurance companies to go out of business. Single Obamacare payer. was designed to move us to single payer. Right. And with those numbers that you just put out about the difference between Medicaid and private insurance, that's a very scary proposition. Well, it's let's, terrifying. Let's, uh, let's explain uh, this thing you're talking about is what? The expense ratio? Medical loss ratio. Medical loss ratio. That's what ratio. I was talking about before in the In other Medicaid. words, really, this is like a business uh, where they say, well, you can only uh, charge your customers for the salary and the materials we use Correct. and only 10 or 15 percent more for the rent, the building, the salesman, mm -hmm. the profit, it's price the engineering, controls. the price administrative. <laughs> uh, and, you know, as a manufacturer, the raw cost of something uh, that is material and, and pay is probably in the order of maybe 30 or 40 percent of what uh, is charged finally. And competition, is, you know, keeps that down to a low figure. You can't monkey around with your selling price or you just don't sell. But the fact is, there are costs in business beyond just sticking the knife in, into your patient. And that's what central planners don't understand. Because they yeah. never run a business. The well, vast they're majority not, of people in not, this administration have none, never run they're a business. They're not private sector folks. They've never worked <laughs> a day in not. the private sector. They've Absolutely always not. been with their hands out on the government dole. What is this going to mean for Illinois? 
Oh, good Lord in heaven. Okay. <laughs> it's uh, Sunday. Yeah. Take and pray. Uh, we, know, we know, thanks to the CBO, that it's going to cost the state $68 billion. It's Illinois. It's going to cost the state. The states. Of Illinois. Yes. Sorry, not Illinois. Okay. Illinois, it will begin 2014. Once our Obamacare exchanges are up and running, it will cost us 2014 $2.5 billion. We do not have. And the most fri frightening part is that the legislation, Obamacare, PPACA, only sets up and provides to the state enough money to set up the exchange. In 2015, one year later, the Fed provides no more funding to keep that state exchange so, so, going. So who's going to keep the exchange going? The, the few, tax? the proud, the 53% who actually pay taxes. I bet that 53% is going to go down, too, because businesses are not going to be able to sustain this, which correct. means more job loss. That's correct. That's correct. And the thing that worries me the most, Michael brought it up, uh, is what's been happening in the Supreme Court. I'm very confident that the, the individual mandate will be struck down. I know there's no severability clause, so the whole law should be shut down. Right. What worries me is that the Supreme Court in the past has tried to legislate from the bench. They've tried to actually create law from the bench. If they do not honor the fact that there's no severability clause, and there isn't in there this isn't. legislation. There was in the House bill originally, Correct. and then, well, then it went there to the Senate none in and they this. took it out. So, right. so legally, if the mandate goes down, the whole law should go down. If they do not do that, then here's what happens. Community rating and guaranteed issues stay in place. What's community rating and guaranteed issues? The two biggest liberal legislation disasters the insurance industry has ever faced. One, community rating. The liberal mind says it would be fair if everyone pays the same premium. That's oh boy. fair. So here's what happens when you implement community rating in states like Washington and all the other states. It's failed miserably because what happens is the people who are younger who are going to be hammered under Obamacare. <laughs> they People who are younger, who are paying a nice low premium, have a high deductible, just want catastrophic care, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. now their premium will double or triple because they have to pay the same premium that a 65 or 4-year-old is paying with much higher medical needs. So when their premiums double or triple, they simply fall out of the market adding to more uninsured, which is why this legislation still leaves 20 million people uninsured. Now you add to it guaranteed issue which is exactly what happened in Massachusetts, where you can wait to get a health insurance policy until you are sick. The yeah. problem there is that you have no prior coverage. You mm -hmm. don't have to maintain prior coverage, which mm -hmm. is why HIPAA portability law works so well, because you must prove to your new insurance carrier that I've had 18 months of coverage. I've been paying into the system. Mm -hmm. You cannot simply say, my house just burned down. Hello, State Farm. Give me a policy yeah. to replace my replace house. Replace my house. <laughs> but this is what's happening and has happened in Massachusetts. It's why the, the carriers that are left there, many of them are on the border of bankruptcy because of this guaranteed issue and community rating laws. If those stay and the Supreme Court does not strike this legislation down, you can kiss every health insurance company in this country gone in less than five years. Now then, uh, this is not just a, a heartless thing you're talking about, because when you take some person that doesn't have insurance and they can't get insurance because they didn't have it and they got sick, the house burned down, and now they want insurance to replace the house, right. this isn't heartless. No. Because they can get their medical care right now without the government changing anything. That's correct. They Jack. can go to the county hospital. Mm -hmm. They can go to any private hospital that is a charitable organization uh, run by uh, the Jewish source of uh, Lutherans, Catholics, or, or just uh, people that want it. Any, anything that is uh, a not-for-profit corporation under present law must serve anybody that goes to it. Right. So the person that has no insurance, they still have medical coverage. They may not be able to walk in the door and say, I got a contract, I'm going to climb in a bed here right now, mm -hmm. uh, which one am I getting in? No, they may have to um, say, uh, my God, I need charity now. And after the break, I'm going to tell but you that they there. can also get health insurance. They can get health insurance when they are sick right now, thanks to 1996 HIPAA law. We'll discuss that. But you know what? I've, I've got a question. I mean, during this whole health care de debate in, tw in 2009, mm -hmm. there was a lot of folks that were saying, oh, my gosh, people are dying in America that they Lie. need health insurance. Why? Who's lie. ever seen that happen? Uh, my God, if you fall over in the street on West Madison, 
they'll pull you into the Harbor Light Mission and give you three hots and a cot mm -hmm. until that, you had to move out. That was also a law that was passed in 1986. You're 500 feet within an emergency room and you have an emergency situation, any health care provider must treat you. Yes. And then the bill is sent to the few of the proud, the 53%. You know what? I, I did not have health insurance when I was about 28 or 29, and guess what? They took me, and right. I had to pay the bill myself. But right. uh, you know what? We are going to talk more about Obamacare when we come back after the break.